Today we're gonna to build a very large battery. It has 32 kilowatt hours of storage, lithium iron phosphate cells, and it's over 600 pounds. So we're gonna leave it on this pallet so I can use the pallet jack to move it around my shop. And the cells are massive. These are 628 amp hours each. And it says it on here, 2009.6 watt hours. So if you divide that by 3.2, you get 628. And we're gonna shove all these cells into this little box. Look how small this is. That is a tight fit. Whoops. These are pretty heavy. Negative, positive, negative, positive. There's screws on the bus bars now instead of putting them on here. That's much nicer. This will make it so much easier to tighten these down. And this is gonna connect the bottom cells to the top. This thing's intimidating at first because it's big, but this one is pretty easy to assemble. That's heavy, man. This is a big battery. <laughs> Forgot the positive lead. We've got voltage, nice. 32 kilowatt hours in an hour and a half. That was pretty quick. Once you do one though, it's pretty easy to do more. These terminals are actually nice. And the battery is charging, how cool is that? And 100 amps, so we'll come back when it's fully charged. This is a lot of energy storage. Even with 100 amps, yes, yeah, 600 amp hour cells, this will take six hours to charge with 5,000 watts, that is obnoxious. Now it's the next day and we are fully charged. Now we're gonna discharge this with an EV charger because I can't think of another way to do it quickly. If I turn all this energy into heat with some heat guns or an electronic load, it will heat up my shop a lot. So yeah, we need to put that energy somewhere else. So first we have a NEMA 1450. We're gonna disconnect power. Do as I say, not as I do. All hooked up. And doing it this way will give us a true 0.2C capacity test. Now the shunt's reset. Uh-oh, there's no ground neutral bond. We need to add one. There we go, now it's working. Perfect, now we're pulling 6,000 watts. We're pulling 117 amps. Also, I set up the BMS settings in the app. All you have to do is set the battery capacity. The password is either 1234 or 123456. And you always have to set that up with these batteries, every single one. So we'll come back in a few hours when the test is done. The test is finally done. We pulled 672.91 amp hours, which means we pulled 107% of the rated capacity. That's fantastic. So this cart has been my mobile EV charging system, but instead of 14 kilowatt hours, why not use this new battery? And this cart can technically handle the weight, so let's throw it on. We need to fill up these tires. This cart is supposed to handle 1,400 pounds. We'll see about that. Also, these things bent. So you should lift it from higher up instead of this tiny little rope. But this doesn't go that high, so this is the best I could do. Wow. That is not hard to move at all. That is awesome, actually. I can't believe it. Let's just hope it doesn't break. This is a lot of weight. Now it's running so we can connect an EV and see how well it works. And now we're charging with 32 amps at 240 volts. And we're pulling 152 amps from the battery. And it can do even more than this, which means we have 50 more amps to go. So this battery can give a Model 3 144 miles of range. But I have a Model X, so it's not as efficient. 
which is 86.4 miles. But that's pretty good for an SUV. And this is a complete system. I could connect this to a small off-grid ground mount solar array and charge an EV every single day at level two charging rates. So that's pretty cool. But this thing is expensive. I wouldn't add a hybrid inverter to a cart like this. You'd be better off adding a 12,000 XP or SRNE. But yeah, it's working. So let's discharge it down to zero. And a few hours later, and it passed the test and we're at 0% state of charge. Unfortunately, after I built this system, I messed up my foot. I dropped a server rack battery on it and I'm not even joking. I've been using crutches and a mobility scooter for the last three days straight. So I'm gonna fit a little lesson into this video. You guys need to be very careful with these batteries. The one that dropped on my foot is 100 pounds. This one is 600 pounds. We're getting into some serious weight now. Now I have to show you what it looks like because it's awful. So next few seconds, viewer discretion is advised, but here's what my foot looks like. They said that there's no fracture, but there's lots of soft tissue damage. Lucky for me, I had a nerve disorder and lots of other health problems, so I know how to do this really well. I'm already back on my bike and I'm moving it. So as long as I get that swelling pumped out of there fast, I'll be fine. But this thing is dangerous, man. These batteries are no joke. Also the Cerberac battery, I couldn't have avoided it and it came straight down on my foot. Let me show you what happened. So this hand truck, it did not have a battery on it. We were redoing this roof and it was about to rain. So we moved all the batteries over to the other side of the shop. So when I went to move it, I thought it was strapped down and I tilted it forward and the battery went straight down on my foot. And I went delirious. I got nauseous, I got dizzy. I felt like a fever. I was laying on the ground for like 10 minutes straight. I totally thought I broke my foot. It was really painful. Now I'm still healing from this. I'm in lots of pain right now, but I was like, this can never happen again. Again. And even moving this with the engine hoist, it bent them. So I need something that can actually move these things. So I got a real forklift for the channel. And I ordered some ropes to go over the fork so I can actually safely lift these batteries. Now this battery is considered DIY, but if you don't have this lifting equipment, it's pretty dangerous. If you have friends, 300 pounds is manageable, but 600 pounds is a lot. And having it on here is dangerous. This is not smart either. Now the larger model is pretty cool, but I think it's better to get the smaller one. Technically the volumetric density of this one is fantastic. And the best way to actually use the large one is to build it in place. So if your system is stationary until the end of time, this is fine, but you really got to think about what you're doing. I have lots of tools for doing this and lifting stuff. And I need to think about this more when I talk about these batteries and give recommendations. Also, I don't know what else to test. It has the same BMS. It does have new cells. Also, I took out the 18K PV because I hate the settings on that. The 12,000 XP is much easier to set up. And this will almost max out the output, which will be cool. It's hard to test these batteries because no one has a load large enough. 48 volts times 240 is 11,520. We're still not maxing out this inverter, but it will max out the battery. But anyways, I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. So I was supposed to rest for a few days, but I've got nothing on my hands but time. And I've been way more disabled than this. This is nothing. So I finished wiring it up and we're gonna max out the output. Here we go, we've got power. All right, let's go charge it up. And we're pulling 201 amps. Look at that. Finally able to load test this BMS. We're gonna run it to zero, so this will be an awesome test, but it's gonna take a while. So we'll come back when it's dark. The test is almost done. There hasn't been a single disconnect and all the cables are warm to the touch. I need to find a cooler cart that we can mount inverters on, something that looks better than this. Cause this is not that great. This doesn't look cool. Functionally, it's amazing. It'd be nice if there was a second level so we could put the inverters on top and batteries on bottom. So it's frozen at 5.6 amp hours. I need to change the settings to match the capacity test results, but the voltage is pretty low, so it should cut off in a minute here. These tests are not as exciting. Usually they would fail. And the app says 88 miles was added to the Tesla. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.